Hello, we are students from Warsaw College. We are making a short film about the Arboretum. Hope you enjoy it. The Warsaw Arboretum is a popular natural oasis in the heart of Warsaw. But are the hundreds of daily visitors aware of the history behind the park? We are going to investigate and present our findings in this short documentary. Warsaw at the time of the Industrial Revolution had a bustling industry making metal buckles for shoes and horse furniture. There was a need for limestone in order to make quality iron. The original site of the park was a series of lime pits and tunnels. Unfortunately, in 1835, these permanently flooded to form the lakes that we know today. Around this time, the lakes began to be used for fishing, boating and ice skating in the winter. On Saturday, 12th July 1845, tragedy struck when the Mayor of Warsaw, John Hyatt Harvey, drowned in Haddington Lake whilst taking an evening swim. Adam Homer reports from Haddington Lake. In 1845, the Mayor of Warsaw decided to take a swim in one of these lakes. But he sadly drowned and his body was never recovered. and a member of the search party also drowned. It was reported that the mayor often went for a swim in the evening and he was a strong swimmer, but people think he hit his head on the rocks when he dived into the lake. The Warsaw Arboretum was officially opened on Saturday the 4th of May 1874 by Lady Hatherton. She was the wife of the park owner, Lord Hatherton. When she opened the park, there was over 4,000 people cheering her on. The Arboretum opened as a private park and people had to pay two pennies for adults and one penny for children under the age of 10. The private park was a commercial flop and the park was taken over by the council in 1881 and entrance was made free. Boating, swimming and skating on the lake was banned due to safety concerns. In 1887, during a particularly cold winter, Hatherton Lake froze over and skating was permitted for the cost of sixpence. The park proved to be very popular with the inhabitants of Warsaw and attendance broke all records on Whit Monday, 1888, when over 10,000 visitors attended the park. In 1889, a new bandstand was built and hosted many brass band concerts over the years. The wooden stocks in the Arboretum are very old. Originally, they were positioned at the bottom of the steps at St Matthew's Church on the High Street. The stocks also have a whipping post at the side. The people of Warsaw were punished for carrying out petty crimes by being locked in the stocks or chained to the whipping post. People in the stocks then were insulted, had rubbish, urine or even poo thrown at them by members of the passing public. There are instances where well-liked people were talked to politely, offered a blanket to keep warm and even given food. Almost every town in the country had their own set of stocks. They are no longer used as a form of punishment. I think it's a good thing that Warsaw still have theirs to keep forever. Another interesting object in the park can be found near to the bandstand, James L. Bryan reports. Wow, it's bigger than I thought. This, this rock is made from rhyolitic lava. It was taken from Snowdon in Wales. 
over 18,000 years ago. It was carried by a large glacier in an estimated one metre per day. It took an estimated 460 years in a 115 mile distance from North Wales to Warsaw. The boulder was placed in the Arboretum in 1925. It is positioned near to the bandstand. There's a special bronze statue that can be found by the main entrance that is dedicated to one of Warsaw's most famous authors, James Ball reports. Jerome Clapp Jerome was born on the 2nd of May 1859 at Belsize House, Bradford Street, Warsaw. The family surname was originally Clapp, however his parents took the unusual decision to change this to Jerome. He is famous for writing the story Three Men in a Boat, which became an instant success. The story is about three friends who took their dog on holiday across the River Thames. The book is still in print now and has been featured in several TV series and films. Get out of the shot, get out of the shot! Colin Cartwright, a Warsaw resident who loved railways, took the ambitious step and built a miniature railway line at Warsaw Arboretum in 1977. It was over a mile along and ran on the northern boundary of the Arboretum. The remains of the platform and turntable can still be seen here, alongside the footpath and entrance to the children's play area. It was very popular and operated most weekends. It had eight miniature steam trains running along the busy track. Mrs. Carol Smith, a Warsaw resident, remembers it well. Hello, Tom. Yes, I used to bring my two children here, George and Katie, back in 1995. We used to catch the train at this point here of the park and we used to travel about half a mile right down to the Arboretum extension. The kids used to love it, so did I. The Arboretum held the Walsall Illuminations, a popular tourist attraction which were held each autumn for six weeks. The first show was held in 1951, although illuminations have taken place at the park since 1875 when candles were placed in coloured jars. The last illuminations were held in 2008 with a record low attendance, making a loss of £167,000. It was then decided to scrap the event due to high costs and also damage caused to the park. Louise Wharton is the Arboretum Parks manager. Thomas Adams reports from the visitor centre and asks Louise a number of questions. How many people work at the Arboretum? There's two teams of five staff that work on the ground and they work a shift pattern so with parking staff seven days a week. And then in the office we have one person who looks after the events bookings for the park and the running of this building, the bookings for this building and then um, myself as the manager. So in total, that's 13 in total. Are there any plans to bring back the water lights? No, that's, I think um, of all the questions that I get asked, that's the most common question that I get asked. And I've been asked that question all over the world, not just in Warsaw, because um, everybody knows the illuminations as part of the Arboretum, yeah. don't they? Um, the reason we haven't got plans to bring them back is because although um, it was very popular, famous um, for Warsaw, the other side of the story is that he did a lot of damage to the park. How many of you come back to visit the park each year? We estimate that we have um, over 1.2 million people visits a year um, to the Arboretum. What kind of future plans for the Arboretum? For me as a manager, 
I see it as actually the start of the future of the Arboretum. And what the, the future plans really are to promote the park more, um, to develop the usage of this building, um, to produce an education pack so we can bring a lot more school groups in and have um, a mixture of school-led activities but also ranger-led activities that we can do from our side. Um, and to um, focus on the events that we provide to give a full sort of events calendar across the year. All the lakes, swimming. We don't allow swimming in the lakes now. Um, it hasn't been allowed in the lakes for um, for a long, long time. Um, for the you know they are the water is dangerous. The differences with the lakes here is that they are old limestone quarries, so they're extremely deep. Um, and there are a lot of currents in the water um, because of the old limestone mine workings. That's what the real problem is. So it's very deep and it's very cold. What is on earth on your day you have had visit the park? There's um, a lot of wildlife in the park. I think I don't think these bird species are unusual, um, but they're very, very interesting. So we do have kingfishers on the deep pond on the small lake because it's very um, secluded. The one side of the bank is very secluded and they're absolutely fantastic to watch if you've got the patience to sit and watch the kingfishers. And we have um, buzzards that nest in the extension as well. Um, those are quite unusual, the buzzards are. So we had um, a situation last year we, we have a lot of like stories and a lot of funny things that happen. Um, obviously, you can imagine on a day-to-day -day basis. And last year, one of the uh, a buzzard just dropped out of the sky into the children's play area. We don't know why. We don't really know what happened. We don't know if it flew into anything. Um, and we had the buzzard um, in a cage behind the visitor centre behind this building um, for a little while until it recovered, and it was able to fly as well. So that was interesting watching the buzzard at close quarters. Thank you very much, Chloe. The Arboretum today has changed quite a bit from when it was first opened in 1874. The park has recently undergone a major upgrade. There is now a visitor centre with a cafe and meeting rooms with an outside seating area. There are lots of sporting activities available such as skateboarding, tennis, table tennis, bowling and football. There is also a purpose-built fitness trail plus a play park for the younger visitors, including a splash pad during peak seasons to keep the youngsters cool in hot weather. The Arboretum is a natural oasis with a busy town. It's a great place to go for a walk, keep fit, take your children to play or just to relax. We are very lucky to have such a wonderful place within walking distance of our town centre.